the A321 XLR has taken off to the skies. It's a milestone in modern aviation and a really joyful happening as most of the news in the past few years in the aviation industry has been negative, depressing about delays, cancellations, deaths, slowdown, people losing their jobs, a lot about corruption. So seeing some beautiful engineering, some new records being broken, yeah, makes my day and hopefully also yours. So fasten your seat belts and let's go on this amazing new ride. Like, subscribe and share. The sponsor of today's video is intuitive.me. Personal development, personal growth, business efficiency improvement. More about this at the end of the video. Hi. I was close to uploading my video about the announcement that the A321 XLR would make its first flight mid-June, which is about now and then I saw that already happened and I was like oh wow okay so basically it just saved me an hour or two of work but I'll be including some new footage and also some words from Airbus CEO Guillaume Fauré. Today is a special day for our company. The first F321 XLR aircraft has just completed its first flight safely landing at Hamburg Finkenwerder Airport. I want to congratulate the flight test team for doing such a wonderful job. They made a reality of our hopes and dreams after several years of hard work by hundreds, if not thousands, of Airbus people. You've developed this aircraft rapidly and under pressure. The flight test program will now begin with the entry into service scheduled for early 2024. I can't wait to see it in operations and to see how it's going to change the aviation world. Yes, we have had the Boeing 757-200. But this, this is still a new step. Its range is superior to that of the 757, so it opens new doors for new routes. More point-to-point, -point, um, both between Europe and the US, but also between Europe and the Middle East, and within Asia. And I believe even Australia, I mean, within Australia and between Australia and Southeast Asia. And I think that even from Australia to Japan would be a possibility, but I'm not so sure about that range. But remember, the Jap there, was, there was one country who wanted to have it to actually fly to Japan and back. So a lot of new possibilities, also from the US to South America. And what's interesting is to see that the latest announcements of Boeing have been that they will not respond. And I'm not going to be talking a lot about Boeing in this video. Maybe I'll record a separate video about everything that's happening there at this moment. But in this case, Airbus is really profiting a lot from its monopoly in this segment of the market. There's no competition for the A321 XLR. You're seeing now on screen how the A321 XLR compares to the Boeing 757 and to the previous A321 CEO. And I will also put the numbers on the screen now for the number of orders. And that's very interesting. The A321 NEO is outperforming the A320 NEO when it comes to numbers sold which is a complete change compared to the CO variants. 
and we could attribute these changes to a few factors. The A321neo has a better range than the A321CL. So it's more competitive, more competitive compared to the A320neo, where the A321CO was not as efficient as the A320CO. But what has been boosting the sales is first the LR version, which already had a longer range, and the XLR, which gave it that extra push. And I believe that the XLR version of the A321 Neo will be the best selling of the A320 Neo family. So the A321 XLR is really efficient. It has an amazing range. It's outperforming any aircraft of the same passenger capacity. And it's also outperforming the Boeing 757-200ER, which means that the companies who have been flying the 757-200 and 200ER, yeah, it would be a no-brainer for them to just buy the AT21XLR. It would give them all the flexibility they need for short and longer ranges. It would save them a lot of money, especially with the rising oil prices again, which is really playing the cards of Airbus. And let's be frank, you can buy an aircraft that has a capacity of 180 passengers, or you can buy one that has 220 and it has a bigger range. Which one would you choose? Yes, it comes at a higher cost, but you can transport more people, so you can sell more tickets, you can make more money, and you have all the flexibility of the extended range. I believe that this is one of the reasons that the KLM Air France group, and mainly the KLM and Transavia part of it, did choose to switch after 30 to 40 years of loyalty to Boeing and the Boeing 737 before that, McDonnell Douglas DC-9, to switch to Airbus, to the A320neo, the A321neo. When they say A321neo, they did not specify which one. A little bit like Boeing is not specifying which version of the 737 MAX a customer is ordering. But we will know soon because the manufacturing of the A321XLR requires 10 to 15% more work compared to the A321 Cabin Flex, which already requires 30% more work than the regular standard A321neo, which is about 42 to 45% more. So this will mean that the price will be higher. This also means that because the manufacturing is more complex, because of the wing box being different due to the integrated fuel tank, it's not a last minute decision that can be taken. The production line for the XLR will be separate from the other A321s, whether it's the A321neo or the A321LR, and thus it needs to be planned. But the fact that they're building a separate production line for it tells you something. They're expecting high numbers. They know they will be selling more XLRs than LRs and the normal NEOs. I decided to record this video because I'm really excited about this. This is, uh, I believe, a revolution in today's aviation. Also with the trend that has been changing even though the numbers have been growing again, the numbers of flying people. Yeah, this sounds really funny. If people could fly, they wouldn't need aircraft. You know what I mean, of passengers. Point to point was already becoming more and more important. And most orders were placed before 2020. But 
with what's happening at this moment in the world and what's expected to happen again or slightly differently, it will be more important. And we see it already with uh, SAS, Scandinavian Airlines, that has trouble now with its fleet, that it has too many wide body aircraft that it cannot utilize. And we will see more and more companies that will shift their capacity, that will shift the composition of their fleet from, let's say, 60-40 or 70-30 being the highest number being single aisle aircraft and the larger number being wide body aircraft towards the single aisle. And the A321XLR will be filling this gap. More airlines will choose to have an aircraft that has a capacity of 220 and still has a great range where previously for this distance if you wouldn't have the Boeing 757 you would need to have an Airbus A330, a Boeing 767, a Boeing 787 or maybe even an A350 which are all much larger than the A321 and if you cannot fill it, you're losing money because you're flying a big aircraft that is heavier, that's consuming more fuel. And yes, you may be, may be able to stuff more cargo in the belly, but still you will have the upper deck half empty. And that's not efficient. Well, I would say stay tuned. Um, Check the Airbus website, check YouTube to see when they will have the first flight. I'm sure there will be videos about it. Maybe it will even be live. So, yeah, let's enjoy this beautiful event and see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day. So, the sponsor of today's video, intuitive.me. You must say, hey, intuitive. Yes, you got it. That's my main job. These videos that I'm recording here on aviation, they're just for fun. They're my hobby. They're my passion. And that's what intuitive.me is about. It's about discovering what you really love to do and start doing it. It's about discovering who you are, finding your inner peace, dealing with those triggers, those things that really piss you off when they happen and you lose control over yourself. It's dealing with things that have been there for a long time, like blockages and trauma. It's finding your ideal partner. It's changing things in your life that you have no clue how to change, but you really want them to change. And as I always say, asking for help is not a sign of weakness, it's a sign of strength and a sign of true smartness. Because the real smart people and the real successful people, they have coaches, they have mentors, yes, plural. So click the link in the description and have a look. If you've watched this far, then you probably already resonate with me, so maybe it can help you. Click the link in the description. Like, subscribe, and share.